that shit. Welcome to Trash Talk MMA. Smile on my face, behind my back, and talk trash. The number one podcast for news and insight that matters in the world of mixed martial arts. <laughs> Brought to you live and unfiltered from all four corners of the globe by MMA aficionado Antoine Pelchay. Yo, and welcome to the Trash Talk MMA podcast. I'm your host, Antoine Pelchay, and today I have two special guests in the house. One FC fighters, Stephen Langdown and Major Overall. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Very well, thank you. Awesome. We're in a, a little beer pub, but I'm the only one who's allowed to drink. Unfortunately. <laughs> So Steven, you're not allowed to drink because you got a fight coming up, buddy. Yep. Uh, May 22nd, 1FC, what is that, what, one championship? Mm-hmm. 27, we're already 26. 27? Yeah, it's 27 events deep. 26 was the last one in Manila. Manila. Mm-hmm. I know it's called Warriors Quest. So this is an interesting, uh, an interesting time for you. You've actually had, you've had three fights, you're two and one. Yep. You've had two vicious stoppages in one championship. Your fourth fight's coming up. You've basically done your whole fight career there. How did that happen? Yeah, um, every every fight I've had has been in one championship. Um, I signed with them in March of 2013. Um, I was offered a contract. And so I kind of thought, you know, why fight for free if I'm still gonna get punched and kicked in the face when I can go and do the same thing and make money. So I decided to just, just fight pro right off the bat. That's interesting. Well, what uh, what gave you the possibility of doing that? Not everybody's got the ability to do so. How did you How did you connect with one? Um, well, I was, I was heavily involved in um, social media and stuff. Um, uh, this is a great story. This is a story that every time I do an interview, they ask me the same story. Um, well, I want a twist on it then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, mm, early 2013, I posted a video on Sherdog of me training on like the stand-up forum just like asking for critique and stuff and someone at once saw it um, they got in contact with me I got offered a contract um, <laughs> essentially that that is the story and you know I just I just took it and ran with it and here we are today so what do you think they saw in that in that in that video of you that that resonated with them and that made them think that you needed to get into the fold right away well I think you know they, there weren't many Singaporean um, MMA fighters and you know they, they want local guys on the local shows so they just had to find local guys and yep. I put myself out there and they threw the bait and I bit. Okay. So Major, you're also a one, you're a one championship fighter. You've had three or four, three or four fights in, in one now? Three fights. Three fights, okay. And your last one was? November last year. Okay. So uh, anything on the horizon lined up for you or what's keeping you busy right now? I'm just coaching right now. Most, mostly coaching and working on um, filling in, filling in the holes, and just improving my game overall. Yeah, so interestingly enough, I, I was actually at Juggernaut yesterday, interviewing and podcasting with uh, with Arvind, and uh, I happened to meet you there before uh, even meeting you today. And even though we had this pod, this podcast lined up, so um, yeah, Juggernaut just opened their new their new facility. How long how long have you been with them for? Uh, over a year now. Over a year. Okay. So, so are you just uh, what are some of these holes you're trying to shore up because you got a pretty complete game I mean I'm just always looking to, to explore new things I mean I don't want to be the same fighter that people see in the last video because that's who they're training for so I want to be a, a different fighter than that every time yeah and I mean that seems to be a, a trademark of yours you've got a you've got a really good composure but you've also got some incredible explosiveness and some diversity in the ways that you attack how, how do you map that out how do you reconcile that in your head when you're training and what you want to what you want to deliver when you get in the cage I just try to think outside of the box. I don't really color inside of the lines. So I, I look at concepts rather than specific techniques or a specific way to do a technique. And if I see an opening, I'll just take it. That's the way I always, that's the way I just play now. Anyway. Now you have a really, a really deep background in martial arts. I believe you started, uh, you started training at four with your father, no? Correct. So what, what, what did your father bring to the table at that stage? We're just doing like traditional Japanese martial arts. Um, some karate, some Aikido. Okay. Just different stuff. And did that really resonate with you at that age? Uh, it just made, I mean, it's just something fun to do when you're a kid. It was like it was like a game, you know. It yep. wasn't. It didn't think anything serious about it. When you're a kid. I mean, how can you take anything serious at the age of four, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what's interesting with that is how it puts that it puts that base in you. Because from that base, uh, I mean, you went on to do wrestling in high school and then taekwondo and then boxing and even gymnastics. 
Correct. And I think uh, looking at your style of fighting, the, 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 the dynamics, the explosiveness, and the unpredictability that you bring, it looks like you've managed to tie all that together in a pretty spectacular package. Well, there, I mean, there are some, some uh, overlying principles in, in sports, different sport, between different sports, between different styles of martial arts. And once you, once you see the concept, you know, then you can, you're free to kind of make your own, your own way, your own path from there. Now, uh, Stephen, you train at uh, Trifecta Martial Arts. Yep. Tell us a bit about, about Trifecta. I know they're one of the big gyms here. Um, well, they've been open for about a year now. Uh, the, the location I train at, which is the Bukitima branch. Um, we have a really good um, team. It's uh, constantly expanding. We have the Singapore Fighting Championship uh, lightweight champion training there. Um, so yeah. that's, uh, yeah. that's Arvin's uh, yeah, that's Arvin's amateur league. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so, that's pretty interesting what they're doing there. Yeah, so we have the 155 um, champion. We have an American wrestling coach, a Brazilian BJJ coach, a Thai Muay Thai guy. Yep. So we've really got a, a very good team going. There. Yeah, that's one thing that I was really impressed with uh, when I was at Juggernaut yesterday was that how complete their service package is. That it's basically a one-stop shop that you can do absolutely everything you need yes. to do to become a fighter out of there. Is yep. Trifecta the same? Essentially the same, yeah. Okay. Now, what would you say are some of the unique points of Trifecta compared to some of the other gyms out here? Um, the, I think the big the big thing about the Bukatima branch is that it's kind of outside of the city. Most of these gyms, you know, are uh, in the city. It's buildings everywhere. Um, that gym feels a lot nicer. You know, it's um it's next to a horse stable, so you see horses running around oh, outside. Okay. Um, there's lots of like nice greenery everywhere. It feels a lot more comfortable. A lot less metally, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it seems like when you're looking at where Juggernaut is, I mean, you're you're right in the city here. There's not a whole lot of horses running around, right? <laughs> you That's know, right. and it seems, uh, you know, I've been talking with the guys and talking with you before we started recording here. Uh, you know, I was out in Phuket a lot, and you know, all the gyms are kind of side by side, and it's interesting how it seems like you no, know, there's Fight G and Juggernaut, and, and Impact is even uh, even close by uh, those gyms as well. It seems like you guys got a bit of a fight neighborhood there going on. Well, it's not that it's, this is really a fight neighborhood. It's just where it's pro where it's most profitable to put a business like that. You have to look at uh, the majority of your clientele is they can afford to pay those gym dues are going to be people who work in the central business district. Yeah, because the central business it. district is right there, right? And I think right. you guys probably get a lot of students as well, no? You, you get a few. Now, um, is, there, is there are there actually any unis around there, or what's the what's that popular? Where do they come from? The, well, they're all they're spread out throughout the. Throughout uh, Singapore, but that's being so centrally located. It's easy to get to that to that location pretty much from anywhere. Yeah, to, to the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen, you're fighting uh, Haley Alatang. Is that how I pronounce his name? I have no idea. It's somewhere uh, along those lines. Just call it that. It's called Haley Alatang. What do you know about Haley Alatang? What's he going to bring on May 22nd? Um, I know he's Mongolian Chinese, 22 years old. Um, he's a wrestler. Um, my team and I have seen a couple of his fights on YouTube. So you know, um, he's a very grindy fighter. You know, he 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 really looks for the, the takedowns. He doesn't stop till he gets them. So we've been we've been training a lot for that. You know, um, stopping stopping the takedowns, um, using my range, keeping him at, at bay. Yeah, because I mean, your style is really focused on stand and bang, right? Yes. Now. So, in terms of the focus that you're going to put into your wrestling, do you mm -hmm. use that to just prevent the takedowns, or do you have a good ground attack as well? Oh, I think um, if if it gets to the mat, I'm, I'm more than comfortable. But you know, I just like to I like the bang. So that that must be interesting. I mean, if you're you're three fights into your career, how do you and your team go about? I mean, how does your how do your fights get put together? Obviously, one's going to come at you with uh, with a suggestion for an opponent. Mm -hmm. How do you guys talk about that? I mean, because with only three fights to your name, there's got to be some, some some thought put into this process. I mean, people want to build you up. You've got yep. some great momentum right now. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a bit? Um, you know, well, from on our side, you know, um, they, they offer us a fight. We try and find out as much about this guy as we can. So you go on Sherdog, places like that, uh, look for tape on him, and then just, you know, feel... Just try and get a feel for, for the guy and see 
you know how he matches up to me is it are we on you know a similar or close enough level how do I feel about the fight how do the my coaches feel about the fight we sit down we discuss and um, if it's good then we, we give um, one championship the go so who gets the who gets a say in that process is it just you with your coaches or do your does your management have a say in that as well because you guys are under the same management yeah, correct? We have, yeah we are yeah. Yeah. but you train for different train at different gyms, gyms yep, yep. so um, how does that work no that it's it's all um, me and my coaches so management is just purely more from like a I guess like a career at a like truly like a, yeah that sort of management but not actually hey but this is a good opponent or this is a fight that makes sense well we, we do talk about it but at the end of the day it comes down to what my team and I decide Okay. Yeah. All right. How about you, Major? Well, I, I started with uh, the man management after I was in one FC already. So. Okay. Um, I pretty much I trust myself more than anybody else at this point <laughs> for, for yeah. most things mm -hmm. like, re regarding uh, actual fighting. I mean, you you uh, you have a, a bit of a of a deeper career so far. I believe you're six and one. Officially as a pro, but actually I have I have about fourteen fights okay. in MMA and then. Probably a hundred over fights and other stuff like Forms of with wrestling and, and yeah, yeah. jiu-jitsu and kickboxing and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, but this card May twenty second. I think a lot of people are stoked because it's actually taking place in Singapore. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking yep. with talking with the guys that that fight here and train here and have gyms. It sounds like people want more events here. You know that they're really because that's the way that people can show up really get the people living here behind you guys and yeah. really get that support. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on the actual groundswell of MMA currently going on in Singapore? Oh, I think um, the growth of MMA in Singapore over the last few years is, is incredible. Um, I, I always compare it to uh, when um, when I used to I used to be able to watch the UFC or, or 1FC as it then was um, not live, and I could go on Facebook and I wouldn't have to deal with spoilers and stuff. But now, you know, if I, yeah. now if I go on one second and, and yeah. um, poof. If you've spot. missed a fight, you can't touch Twitter, you can't touch exactly. Facebook, you can't touch Instagram, you can't touch exactly. any form of social media. Yeah, and exactly. I, I hate it when people spoil the results of a fight like that. Yeah. But you guys both big fans, you guys try to watch, watch pretty everything. much all the events, you I watch everything. everything. So where are we watching the fight then? Because uh, we got a fight here in uh, Adelaide, UFC Adelaide. Adelaide Arkansas, yeah. Kip Miocic. Where would you guys watch that? I normally just watch them at home. Okay. Yeah. All right. But are there any? Because I guess yeah, that's gonna be really early in the morning on Sunday, right? Yes. Sunday yeah. morning. So that's funny too. You know, and I've talked about this with a lot of guys. It's 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 interesting how you're getting all these international UFC events right in the morning. And even though they take place in. I mean, they're taking place in Adelaide, but it's like, okay, does that mean all these guys are fighting in the morning? Well, that's, I mean, it well, that's is, what they right? have to do for Fight Pass. So the, I know. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys have Fight Pass? No. It's it's actually, I, I love it because, you know, I've been traveling so much for the last yeah. year and a half, and uh, yeah. Fight Pass has just saved my life. I'm a huge, uh, I'm a huge evangelist of that thing now because yeah. especially it's like, I think some people complain about it when they're in North America because what they're seeing on there is quite limited. But once yeah. you get out of North America, you know, it detects where you are. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all the events, out, you get every single fight that's live for free. I mean, for your subscription, for 10 bucks a month, except for the paid portion of the pay per view. Okay. You know, so that basically the main card. The main card. So all these Fox Sports ones, UFCs on Foxes, all these international events, all these international ultimate fighters, yep. they're all available on there. So yeah, I'm a big advocate of, of that. And you know, and then, and then on top of it, you get all the back catalog, Strike Force, Pride, WC, WC yep. and they've even started putting other divisions that they haven't even, uh, other promotions that they haven't absorbed yeah. into the UFC. So it's a it's a lot of value. I think when it first came out, it was a uh, it was a bit dodgy, but it's pretty much the Netflix of uh, of MMA, MMA now. You know? Hello. So May 22nd, again, big fights. What are some of the other scraps on uh, on that card that you guys are looking forward to? I think the main event, first off. Koji and Aoki. Koji, uh, Koji Ando and uh, Shinya Aoki. Yeah. I actually uh, crossed Aoki while I was waiting for you guys in front of the coffee bean at, uh, oh, was he there? at, at the mall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just, he just walked by me with his, with his group, with his entourage. Does he does he have some English or what? Not not really. Yeah, exactly. I think he, he he speaks a little bit of English. He I says thank you, Evolve. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Evolve. After every, every, actually, thank you, Evolve. Those, yeah. are every, those are the three key words that you need. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what are we looking at? What do you guys uh, What do you guys see going on in that main event? To me, uh, to me, Ando is. 
uh, he's got to he's got he's got to step it up pretty hard here. I mean, I think Shin you know, Aoki still takes it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a stylistic uh, nightmare for Oji. Yeah, but I mean, like, what you know, what is Ando bringing to the table that could really threaten something that Aoki's never seen? I mean, nothing that he's never seen. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, you know, my my chances of him winning the, that fight are pretty low. I think Aoki's going to take it in pretty spectacular and quick fashion. You see how hungry we'll see how hungry Shinya is because yeah, that, that could always be an issue. You know, we haven't had a real a real challenge in so long. You know. It's hard, man, because all those lightweights, they're, uh, you know, the UFC's got a stranglehold on that division, man, yeah. because it's, uh, it's a shark tank, so it's probably pretty difficult for, uh, for one to really find those, that elite competition for them. Oh, I, think, I think um, they'll find the, the winner of the Lowen, Tyanez, and I'm not sure what the other guy's name is. Kamitov. Yeah. I think the winner of that would, would be a good fight for Aoki. Especially if uh, Lowen wins, because he's looked pretty good in the the one cage so far. It'd be easy to line to line the uh, one FC roster with a bunch of Russians and, and arguably say that we have better, yeah, or as good of guys as the, as the UFC because they don't want those guys. Yeah, but they've got some. I mean, they've got some. There's a bunch. They keep of it. They keep it. Uh, they, they keep their quota. They stay up to their quota. Yeah. Yeah. They don't go over their quota. That's you know, sure. they're not gonna have. But let's talk about that too. Right? Talk about this, this emergence of Russian fighters. I mean, you know, it's it, no it, emergence. It, it's like the, it's just. The but now, but they're getting exposure now. Now they're getting you know, the exposure. exposure. Of, of course, players, we know yeah. they've always been there. But it, it's almost like, you know, it, 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 their scene was kept dormant from the public yeah, eye for a solid yeah, yeah, yeah. five to eight years almost. You know, yep. and then all of a sudden, Bellator started bringing a whole bunch out, and they've been wreaking havoc in Bellator. And then finally, the UFC has been reaching out to these guys, and there's a bunch in there as well. Is there, is there a, you know, it seems like there's a solid presence of Russian fighters in, in one as well, right? Yeah. yeah. There's actually one guy that fought once in one and then signed with the UFC. A Russian guy? Yeah, a Russian guy. I forgot his name, but there is one guy that yeah. fought once. How about this Rob Lucido fight? It'd be the most awesome three minutes of my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, be... what I like about Rob is he's a... Uh, he falls in line with some of my favorite fighters, like like Chris Lee, etc. That you know they either get knocked out or or, or knock out. Go you know, on the shield. Rob's, yeah, Rob's a fighter, man. He's not gonna exactly. he's not gonna point fight anybody. He's gonna. And uh, I had him on the show, and you know he's supremely confident. But uh, you know he's got his back against the wall on this one, and I'm I'm curious to see. You know he's I know he's been training hard. I was out in, in Phuket for three months and. He was just living at Phuket Top Team, grinding like crazy, and uh, you know he he knows that my, my podcast with him is going to come out real soon and uh, before the event, and he's he's supremely confident, but he's also got his back against the wall on this one. You, know, you don't yeah. want to you don't want to go zero three in any major promotion. Yeah. You know. Well, he actually won. He'd, he'd be one in three. He had a pretty pretty savage win again. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, he beat that Japanese guy. Yeah, he avenged one of his losses. Yeah. So. Yeah, but still, it's still a three-fight losing streak, and that that kind of in in, in our industry, that's that's, that's a lot. that's a red flag, yeah. you know. So let's, let's speak about you, Stephen, from from your you know your experience in one. You you won your first fight destructively. You lost the second mm -hmm. by submission, and then you came back and won again. What was your mindset going into your third fight after that loss? Um, you know, I was just really, really. I think losing kind of set a fire in me, and uh, I never wanted to feel. That, that same feeling again. I was really determined. Just uh, I just wanted to win. I always want to win, and I wanted to prove to myself that you know that I am good enough to do this. That I can do this. So I, I put in the hours. I trained hard, and um, I went to, to Malaysia, fought Raymond Tan in his own hometown, and uh, yep. beat him up. Good stuff. Yep. Now, outside of your um, your career as a professional fighter, you're yeah. also a pretty well-known personal trainer here, and you have yes. uh, you have quite a quite the fan following on social media. We sort of kicked off with that. So, what's what's your relationship to your uh, to, to your fans with social media? Um, I'm very um, appreciative of the support I get from people. How, how did you how did you sort of cultivate and nurture that? How did you because what, what do you got? You got about 20,000 20, followers on Instagram, Instagram yeah. and, and that's all organic, right? Yeah. So. What is that? Is that the is that the is that the boyish looks or uh, is that the skills? What are we talking about? Here? I don't know. It was it was just something I started doing for fun. I mean, there was no intention to to do anything with that. And then it just kind of it picked up speed and it just kept going and going and going. And so I just kept doing it. And 
Yeah, I, I don't have an explanation really for how that worked out. When, when, what, 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 what do you feel was the catalyst of you getting that, that growth on Instagram though? Was it, was it as a fighter or would, were you already experiencing that as a personal trainer? Um, yeah, I think it was when I started to post stuff about fighting. Just so. The chicks dig it? I guess so, I guess so. <laughs> so what's fighter, the fights in the cage or, or, uh, or fighting off the ladies on Instagram? Uh, <laughs> I prefer or, to fight in the cage because you get paid for that. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. So for all the uh, eligible bachelorettes out there, though, uh, you're not available, though, right? No, I am not. We shouldn't. We shouldn't tell people that because you got you to you keep them thinking. I, know. Right? I don't tell people. All right. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just told people that you don't tell people that. So it's a double loss. No, but it's it's just, it's all food for thought, right? How about you, Major? Are you do you got a big presence on them? What's your presence like in your interactivity with your fans on social media? I'm old, man. I don't. I just got a phone, like a smartphone, like a month ago. <laughs> all, the, all the kids are like, dude, you gotta get on social media. I'm like, what is this, what is this Twitter thing you guys are talking about? So I, so I made it's a very powerful in the MMA world, you know what I mean? It's something that Apparently. it's just, it's, uh, it's, 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 I don't think it applies to everything to the same way that it does for MMA, but I think MMA, you know, listen, I called my show Trash Talk MMA. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a thing about immediacy, I think, within news and MMA and with people chatting back and forth and throwing barbs and, 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 and just inciting interest, you know, in your fights and promoting yourself, you know, and it's a real quick and sort of dirty way of doing it. Is it something that you still kind of struggle with or? I, I really don't care, man. I'd rather be like a cult classic or a cult hero than like, than have to deal with the social media stuff every day, you know, like, um, I don't know. So honestly, it's just it's just something for you. It's more of a nuisance than something that you really find engaging for yourself. Well, I mean, like as an actual tool to keep in contact. Because I, obviously, I've traveled around a lot, and I've, I've met a lot of people along the way, and it's cool to just kind of touch bases with them yep. every now and then. But as far as like taking pictures of myself in the bathroom, like every day, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's not me. Snapshot, like taking pictures of my food. Like yep. I don't know. Yeah, what, am I to, what am I supposed to do? Like, it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man. Like there's no excuse for me. You know, like, I don't. I don't think I get the same pass as like a, an 18 or 19 year old kid would, <laughs> or, exactly. or a 20 year old like female fitness model. Yeah, you know, but it's funny because what is there? Is there a 10 year gap between the two of you? How old are you, Stephen? 22. 22. 33. 33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm older than you. I don't get into me. Anyone's an old fart here. Um, so I, I mean, that's interesting though because that 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 10 year gap is huge when it comes to this. I mean, you've just this stuff has been part of your whole life, Stephen. This is just, true. You know, whereas. You know, you and I, like, we, we, we grew up in a phase where we, you know, I still had friends who would just roll up on their bicycle to my home and knock on the door and say, hey, yeah. this is Belgium, yeah. and Antoine home. You yeah. know, it's like, that's something that you just, you've never experienced. You probably experienced the tail end of that, you know. You probably had, you know, you know cell phones in your, what, your late teens or even, even I think it was, early teens. It was, like, it was, it was about halfway through college, you know, halfway through uni, the, the way people started to communicate was changing. Everyone was texting each other all of a sudden. And, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's just funny how, but you and I, Major, like we, we still transitioned those generations where we, we knew what it was like before. Mm -hmm. The guy like you, Stephen, you have. It's just, it's just, this is what it is. Yeah. You grew up into Facebook, into Twitter, into Instagram, yep. into YouTube, the accessibility of everything digitally. You know, yeah. and it's, it's, <clears throat> it's so imperative for you as an athlete and as somebody with a, an image to, to put out there and to monetize, it, it, it plays in your favor already all of the work you've put in. And this will definitely, it already is paying dividends. Is I mean, we walked through the mall and you were on a poster and you're like, hey, check it out, you know? <laughs> so you, know, you were already on a poster where rocking some, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, ra not rash guards, but uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what, what's what's that all about? Is is that in terms of you getting onto that poster? Was that an effort that was done through one or your management? How did you, how did you manage that? that That's was, huge. That was through one because um, one just did some uh, co-branded um, compression gear with uh, two times you. Okay. That major and I went to model, and do a photo shoot for like two three weeks ago. Okay, so no. Major, they got you in on that as well? Yes. Okay, but that's actually the event that was held today in the mall. Yeah, that was like what? the official launch of the, of that product. the line, yeah. Okay, so there's, there's you two, is there anybody else uh, of note that's Jake part Butler. of that? Jack Butler. Okay. I think he's the, he's the poster boy for it. Okay, so I mean, this seems like it falls totally in line with uh, kind of your career strategy, Major. How do you interpret something like this? It's cool for you though, right? 
I mean, it gives you some uh, some additional exposure. It puts your face on posters, on product. I don't care about it, about that stuff too much. I just, yep. I just I'll go because they asked me to go. You know, okay. and it's cool to, to experience these kind of things. I go for the experience more or less. Good. I mean, there's not much career. I mean, I'm 33. How much career building? am I going to do, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey man, you'd, you'd be surprised. Yeah. You know, you never want to close any doors. You never want to, you know, not pursue any sort of opportunities. You never know what it's going to bring to you. I mean, yeah. I've noticed this, you know, I just started this thing like three months ago. And every time I meet a new group of people, some door opens up and I meet another group, you know, somehow Gavin heard about what I was doing, you guys manager, mm -hmm. and then instantly he's tweeting me. He's like, hey, you got to get Major and Steven on the show this week. Let's do this. He's got a fight coming up. And I'm like, bam, sure. here we are. You know, and that was just, that was all through the power of social media, you know? Yep. And so, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very powerful thing in terms of the doors and the opportunities that it presents, you know? Awesome. It's been awesome talking to you guys. Uh, any shout outs, any sponsors you guys want to want to hit up? Matalion. Yeah, Leon. Oh, this one's you as well, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> What's yeah. Leon? I mean, I know what the, the move is, but... Yeah, it's an Australian uh, gear company that sponsors both of us. So yeah. again, Fight Apparel? Yes, Fight Apparel. Okay, it's actually a cool name. So if, you, cool name if you're in Australia and you need gear, hit them up. Leon. okay. Yep. Anyone else? Um, big thank you to everyone at Trifecta Martial Arts for helping me with this fight. Uh, big thank you as well to Under Armour Singapore for supporting my career. Oh, okay, so you're on here with Under Armour as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, big shout out as well to Elite Pro Nutrition Singapore for helping me with all my supplement needs. It's perfectly rehearsed. Yeah, it's, it's well planned. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> and he was reading that off notes on it, written in the palm of his hand, folks. <laughs> Major, anybody? Obviously, uh, big shout out to my gym, Juggernaut. Of course. Juggernaut Fight Club. And that's it. Yeah, all right. And come. Come see one championship May twenty second Singapore. Yeah, guys, turn out to May twenty second if you're local. It's going to be a it's going to be a fantastic event on paper. It looks perhaps like the great you know the best, the best event that best that, that one of lined up. Ever, you know, I'm really sure. I'm really excited about it. All right, guys, this was the Trash Talk MMA podcast with my guests, one championship fighters, Stephen Langdown and Major Overall. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. We're out of here. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Trash Talk MMA Podcast. Be sure to visit TrashTalkMMA.com. And don't forget to follow Antoine on Twitter at Trash Talk MMA. Let us know you're listening. Use hashtag Trash Talk MMA.